Okay, so welcome back to another video. So today's video is just a simple computation and that is to calculate what the sine of pi over five is equal to. So that's not relatively reliable to see as um, you can't really look at that through your unit circle as you learn your pre-calculus since the unit circles as those values gives out at every pi over six radians and then going all the way up to, you know, 360 degrees at two pi. So that's not much of help, especially, you know, with this, you know, different input. Um, so there is actually a way to do this. And of course, this is actually relying heavily on a lot of trigonometric identities. Um, no integrals, none of those like fancy formulas. However, interestingly, if you were to find cosine of pi over five and find its exact value, that actually has to rely on a little bit dealing with complex analysis, specifically on the topic of roots of unity. But for this one, it's not gonna be relatively, it's not really gonna be used in this one. Um, this one's actually more of a little bit more of an easier and, um, in, in some in some cases more understanding um to a sense where i think any like if assuming that if anybody has paid attention in like with trig identities in high school then the formulas definitely you'll see applies from there that you learn so um nothing more to that so let's actually just get started let's start off and suppose that uh if we actually let our input so i'll call this data if we let this equal pi over five then suppose that if we were to solve for pi on its own, so obviously we see that we have that five times data is going to equal just pi, okay? So let's do a little bit of a algebraic manipulation. Well, why don't I subtract a two data from both sides? So from the left, we have three data is equal to pi subtract two data. Um, it's also worth noting with this data, it is definitely have, gonna have to be an acute angle with this, you know, pi. Um, notation over here. Next, let's actually take sine of both sides of our um, expression. So we would have sine of three theta is equal to sine of pi minus two theta. Okay, um, but there's a little trick identity and that says that um, if we have sine theta subtract an input, say for example, so sine, sine of pi subtract theta it's actually just going to equal um, just the sine sine theta itself. So back to where it originally started. So really we could just actually just replace the two data for this new substitution. And now therefore we now have um, new um, right-hand side um, simplification, which is to say that this is just sine of two theta. Where can we go from here? So we're actually gonna be using um, two of the different trick identities over here, the triple angle identity and the double angle identity. So we, I think we know, um, standardly, we know that the double angle identity for this right-hand side is supposed to be two times sine data times cosine data. But I don't think a lot of people are aware or really know, know so much about the triple angle identities, it's at least for me that I didn't learn it in high school, just double angle. The triple angle identity, and it, the proof is interesting, but I won't really go too much into it. Um, but the following for the left-hand side says we can write this as three times sine data, uh, subtract with four times sine cube data, Data, and then double angle identity, we know that it's just two sine data and then cosine data. And it's worth noting that because we have that data is equal to pi over um, pi divided by five, then that would have to imply that saying that um, sine data is, you know, obviously not equal to zero because you also want to pay attention to that because um, you can't have a division by zero, but we also have some sine data thing. Um, that can equal zero, so you wanna watch out for that. But luckily, we said that data is pi equal to five. Obviously, we would know that that's not going to equal um, zero. I don't know why I wrote data again. Um, there we go. So from here, then that means you see where I'm going with this, that I'm gonna have to, I'm going to divide sine theta of both sides of the equation. And we see that we have three, then subtract four sine squared theta. Then this is just going to equal two times cosine theta, then we can further expand this sine squared theta. We know that um, that's the fundamental theorem of you know trigonometry, but you just do the different inputs. So it's actually replace this with four times one subtract cosine squared theta, then still the right hand side still preserves. Okay, then we can actually do a little bit of you know um, distributing. So three, then subtract four, then add this with four times cosine squared theta equals two cosine squared theta. And then what we're going to do now is we're actually going to solve for its solution. So that means I'm going to get everything on one side and then the other side is just going to equal zero. So now we would have this little, you know, um, polynomial expression 
But you know, we're, of course, we're dealing with trig functions over here. So this is four cosine squared data, then subtract two um, times cosine data. Then next, we would have uh, three minus four, then minus one is equal to zero. But as we notice, you know, this is actually in a sense like we're dealing with quadratic expressions. But however, we can actually going to use the quadratic formula to solve for our solution. But specifically, um, you would think that we have to solve it for a variable itself or like in this situation data, but we don't have to necessarily take it in that approach. We can actually solve for cosine itself and then apply the quadratic formula. So by doing so, cosine, cosine data we're solving for, then we just plug in our, you know, inputs for A, B, C. So um, negative B, so that will be positive. Um, that will now switch to positive to plus or minus the square root of, um, so this will be negative two square then minus four times your a, which is four, then times your c, negative one, and then all this divided by two times a, where our a is four, okay? Then simplify this out, so we have two plus or minus the square root of, so this will be four, then um, four times four, 16, then negative 16, then plus, so that will become a plus 16, then divided by eight, uh, simply further, we can actually say this is 2 times square root of 20 divided by 8. And we can actually write this as 5 times 4, then take out the 2. Uh, this, you know, square root of 4 is 2. And so then we would have 2 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 5 divided by 8. Then we can simplify this even further to say that this is just 1 plus or minus square root of 5 divided by 4. Okay. Um, however, we know that, um, well, because we have plus or minus, but simply... Um, because one subtract um, square root of five divided by four is you know negative just for negative, then that have to mean that cosine cosine data cannot um, cannot take this value, and so therefore we're just um, therefore we're just left with the positive, and so therefore we can see that cosine data is in, just equal to one plus the square root of five divided by four. Okay, and we're just about almost done here. So the whole point is that we want to solve what sine of um, C compute what sine of pi over 5 is equal to. Okay, so going back, we know that, um, of course, using that fundamental theorem of trigonometry, we know that, you know, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. If you just solve that out to get sine by itself, then we have this little nice formula that I'm sure everyone knows. So sine theta is basically just equal to the square root of 1 subtract cosine squared theta. Then, because we just solved for cosine, we can just actually just plug this back into the equation. So we have the square root of 1 subtract. Um, so this will be 1 plus the square root of 5 divided by 4 quantity square. Then if we solve this out, um, this the parentheses expression will now be um, put, put as, so this is 1 subtract. Um, uh, if we expand this out because you just used the foil, so this will be 1 plus 5 and then plus 2 times the square root of 5 and all this divided by uh, 16 from the bottom. Okay, now we just get a little common denominator. We can see that this is the square root. So 16 um, minus one plus five and then plus two times square root of five. I just put the parentheses over there. Then 16, we solve this out. Then we have um, the square root now, uh, 16 minus uh, one and then plus five. So that means that will be um, 10 then subtract two times the square root of five and then divide it by 16, but we can actually factor out that, you know, 16 square root as four. And so therefore we see that sine data, or specifically then afterwards just plug in data back. So sine of pi divided by five is indeed going to equal the square root of 10, subtract two times the square root of five, and then all this being divided by four. And just like that, we have found our exact value. None of the, um, you know, the numerical approximation that, or rather if you just plug this, plug this into device, then well, that is exactly the numerical, um, that is the numerical approximation. But here we found our exact value. And so if you were to plug this, um, you know, value into the calculator, it's actually gonna come out the same as, you know, decimal expansion itself. So, yep, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.